Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at how we would use volumes of evolution in modelling type questions or questions that involve a real life contest in quote unquote uh, air, air marks. Uh, so we're going to here answer questions from exercise 5D. Now these are generally the most typical questions that you'll get in an exam um, where you have to deconstruct the, the wordy paragraphy type problem um, and apply the maths that's appropriate. So let's have a look at the first type of problem we're sort of given here. Um, a manufacturer wants to cast a prototype for a new design for a pen barrel made um, of solid resin. Um, the, the shaded region shows the diagram used in the cross section of the pen barrel. Um, the region is bounded by the x-axis and the curve of the equation y equals k minus 100x squared and will be rotated around the y-axis. Each unit corresponds to one centimeter. Okay, so the questions that we're going to face are suggest a suitable value for k. Okay, well to answer that, well first of all we need to consider the real life context of this. We're looking to design a pen here. Um, most pens are in between 10 to 15 centimeters long. The value for k is going to be at this point here where the x coordinate has no value. So it's effectively how high is your pen going to be at the end. Um, so anything between 10 and 15 centimeters here is going to be a reasonable approximate value. Use your value for k to estimate the volume of resin needed to make the prototype. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's use our value for k equals 10. Now, first, what we need to know is the y-axis boundaries, because as we're going to be um, revolving around the y-axis here, we need to know the y-axis boundaries. So we don't need to know this point here, which I think I would probably first calculate, but you don't need to do that. In this case, you need to know you're going from 0 to 10 on your y-axis. And then it's going to be x squared. So we need to rearrange this formula here to make it x squared equals. So that's the first thing we're going to do up here. So the first thing we'll do is um, add 100 x squared onto the other side, take away the y onto the other side, divide through by 100, and we get x squared equals 1 tenth minus y over 100. So that's our value for x squared. So given that we've, we're substituting in here a value for x squared, we don't need to square anything this time. Um, we're just going to leave it as 1, minus, 1 over 10 minus y over 100. Apply your integration. And we get y over 10 minus y squared over 200. Substituting the value for 10. And we get v equals pi over 2. So something that has come out quite simple there. Um, your value for k may be different if you've had a go at this question before. Um, but here in this case here the value for v is pi over 2. Um, what I would say here is that we should also probably add in some uh, units at the end here. Given that our um, our units here was centimetres, um, so it's here going to be centimetres cubed. Make sure you don't forget that in these types of questions here because that is one of the points at which people could, or examiners could, deduct some marks. State one limitation of this model where anything that links it back to, most importantly, this context of the question here. So it's unlikely that the cross section of the pen will match the curve exactly. The pen might have other parts to it that affect the shape. Um, you need some you need some space for the ink to fill in. So where does the ink go would be a very good question. Um, so so any comments that links it back to the context of the question here is what they are looking for and generally this question this point here where it's unlikely that the cross section of the pen will match the curve exactly that's a, that's a very standard answer to these sorts of problems here so generally the shape of the object is not going to match the equation of the curve exactly so it's difficult to um, to say that this is an exact model Right, so your turn to have a go at this question here now then. Pause the video and try this one out. Later on for part B, I'm going to be using k equals 8, so you can either do the same as me or use your value of 8 you've suggested in part A. 
Okay, so pause the video and try this one out. All right then, so your value of eight should approximately be the height that a tent affair is going to be. So I've chosen eight meters. The uh, units for this uh, question here are in meters, so that's absolutely fine. Maybe you've gone to 10 meters, maybe you've chosen exceptionally large tents, maybe you've gone to 15 meters, or maybe a smaller tent, maybe just for a coconut shy, so maybe it's just three meters or four meters. Either way, it's going to... Uh, approximately be the height of a tent affair. All right, so part B now looks for us to substitute this in to find the capacity of the tent. Now, first of all, what formula am I going to apply? Well, I'm revolving around the y-axis. So the formula I'm going to need in this case here is going to be pi y integrated from a to b of x squared dy. So the first problem I've got is to rearrange my equation and make x the subject. Now I've chosen 8 here, so I'm going to substitute in 64. So rearranging this, I'm going to have 6400 um, minus um, 100y squared. And now I can substitute this straight into my formula. So it's the boundary from, um, well, it's the boundary on my y-axis. So it's from 8 down to 0. So from 8 down to 0 of x squared. Now this is just going to be this expression here. Don't need to square anything because I have already um, got x squared on its own there. dy. Let's now apply the... Um, integration here, so it's 6400y minus 100 over 3y cubed integrated between 0 to 8 and grab your calculator, type in um, integrating in between 8 down to 0 and we get uh, 102 1400 um, pi all over 3. Now that doesn't make much sense to me. Let's times, let's work this out. Um, so times by pi and we get um, 107, 233 meters um, cubed. Okay, so that's the capacity of the tent. State one limitation of this model. Well, as far as I can tell, the tents that I've seen in the past aren't perfectly circular. So I would say here that it's very difficult for a tent to, um, to model a curved line given that tents generally form straight lines on their boundaries, okay? So it's very difficult for the tent to form the perfect curve that an x squared graph gives us. Okay, so that's it. That's all that chapter five contains, but there are lots more difficult questions ahead for you. Lots of the questions in exercise 5D are very challenging. They, they require you to think inside the context of the problem, which is exactly what the exam is gonna require of you as well. So don't skip this exercise. Plow on and have a go at lots of the questions from exercise 5D. Persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Right, thanks for watching.